Okay, so we're back today talking about pair programming. What is it, how to do it, and what it could possibly end up looking like for you. If you're new to programming, you may have heard about this concept of pair programming. But the thing is, without ever having done it before, you may not know what it could possibly look like and what the goals of it are. The thing is, it can look a few different ways and those variations basically have to do with either how confident you are or how much help you need. So we're gonna talk about three variations of pair programming that I've come up with and they're based on your confidence level. I call them the sounding board, the collaboration, and waving the white flag. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, the first variation of pairing is the sounding board. And this is basically what it sounds like. If you're approaching your pair programming session with a sounding board in mind, it means you have a high confidence level and you're basically just looking for a little bit of feedback, maybe to bounce ideas off somebody or get somebody else's ideas or feedback on a particular approach that you're thinking about taking to solve a problem. But basically at this point, you know what you're doing. I think the sounding board method could also encompass rubber duck debugging. Rubber duck debugging is this technique by which you solve your problems through saying step by step and line by line what your code is actually doing. And a lot of times by approaching your code in this methodical way and actually forcing yourself to slow down and ask yourself what's going on, the solution to your problem becomes clear to you. And with rubber duck debugging, you can do it with an inanimate object, which is where the name comes from, but it also helps sometimes I've found to have another person there. So even if you're just on a Zoom or in a conference room with somebody and you're just talking, a lot of times it's helpful just to have someone to talk to to, and it helps you solve those problems. So that's the sounding board. Let's talk about the collaboration. So it's probably obvious from the name, but the amount of help you need from the other person relative to your own confidence or understanding is about equal in a collaboration. Whereas in the sounding board, you're mostly confident and the other person is there kind of just playing a role for you to verbalize things. Now we've kind of come to a point where we're a little bit more equal. And I think this is what most people have in mind when they picture pair programming. It's a true collaboration among basically equals where we're solving a problem together and we're both not really sure maybe what's going on and we kind of approach the problem and come to the solution as a team. This is truly a scenario of of two heads being better than one. And so you get all of your own problem solving approaches and you also get access to another person's. And so the idea is that together you end up solving this problem. For me, a lot of times this looks like getting on a Zoom and saying, hey, have you tried this? Have you thought about that? Have you tried console logging that value? Or do you know what's happening in this part of the code? And it's really a true back and forth. You end up challenging the other person. Maybe they end up teaching you something that you didn't know. And then hopefully at the end of the day, you solve the issue at hand. Your approach to a true collaboration in pair programming will probably change over time. And it may take you some time to figure out your rhythm for how you like to approach things, whether you're comfortable doing that more on Zoom or more in person. And as you do this with colleagues, over time you learn other people's styles, you learn your own style. And the idea is over time, you just begin to get better and better at sharing your knowledge in this way. That's a collaboration. Let's talk about waving the white flag. It's also probably not a surprise what this means and we've all been here and this is a scenario in which you're totally stuck you have no idea how to solve a particular problem or how to fix a bug that you're encountering and so you go to somebody that you respect maybe somebody that's a more senior engineer and you just say hey do you have a few minutes I really need some help I'm blocked or I'm stuck. And at that point, you are waving the white flag and you need somebody to come in and kind of tell you what to do. So these sessions can end up looking like the more senior person actually does like remote control of your desktop and they're kind of driving. Or a lot of times it looks like for me, either I'm receiving very direct instruction like, hey, I think you should do this or console log that, let me see what's going on here or vice versa. If I'm doing that with somebody that's really stuck, and I know how to solve the problem, or I think I know how to solve the problem, I'll give very specific instructions as to, hey, let's figure out what's going on and try and get this fixed. I think these kinds of sessions can be really helpful when you need them, but the risk is not to become over-reliant on them. So earlier in my career, when I had more senior engineers around me, I got used to relying on this kind of session a little bit. And the problem with that is it prevents you over time from building your own problem solving skills. So basically with this technique, waving the white flag, I think it's really good in a pinch but it shouldn't be something that you come to rely on. An important way to not rely on these sessions is to allow yourself to struggle and to really do your own research, 
Google your error message, really force yourself to think through what's going on. In fact, even going through the steps that I've listed out, so rubber duck debugging, then having a more collaborative session would be good steps to take before finally waving the white flag. So for me, those are the three stages of pair programming. I'd love to know if you have a different take, so feel free to leave a comment below. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment, so consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.